Welcome to part three of preparing your Active Directory infrastructure for Exchange Server 2007. If you haven't watched part one and part two yet, I suggest you go back and take a look at you know, part one and part two. And those first two introductory videos will get you through uh, you know, the AD uh, configuration and the DNS configuration to make sure everything is up to speed to where we want it to be. Okay, so let's take a look at how to raise the uh, domain functional level. Uh, some basics on domain functional level. Whenever you install an Active Directory domain, by default, your domain functional level is going to be at mixed. So to determine your domain functional level, you just right click on itvideocoach.local. This would be uh, your domain inside Active Directory Users and Computers. Go to the domain. My domain is itvideocoach.local. Just right click and go to raise domain functional level. And you can see here that the uh, current domain functional level is mixed and that we want to raise it to native. Now what mixed means is that we have uh, possibly still some NT40 backup domain controllers. Now you probably don't have any NT40 backup domain controllers, or at least we hope you don't. It's possible that you may. Uh, if you do, you need to get rid of them, and then you can raise your uh, domain functional level to native. Now, keep in mind that this demonstration is for a, an install of an Active Directory domain that doesn't have any existing Exchange. Okay, this is a brand new clean install of Exchange Server 2007. We're not transitioning from Exchange Server 2003 to 2007. Uh, so we're not worried about any kind of exchange levels. Like if I was transitioning from Exchange Server 2003, I would have to make sure my Exchange Org level is raised to native. Okay, this is not that. I just want to make that point that there's no existing exchange at all. This is brand new clean install. Okay, so from the very beginning, uh, we're going to be at mixed. Uh, which means we can have NT40 backup domain controllers still, 2000 domain controllers, and 2003 domain controllers. If I raise the domain functional level to native, that means I can no longer have those NT40 backup domain controllers. And what we'd prefer to do, if possible, is even though the minimum requirement is to raise the domain functional level to native, we'd like to raise it to O3 if we can. Okay. Uh, if I raise it to O3, that means I've gotten rid of all my NT40 backup domain controllers and I've gotten rid of all my 2000 domain controllers. Now keep in mind to support Exchange, you don't have to get rid of all your 2000 domain controllers. You can have uh, one 2003 domain controller that has to be your Schema Master FISMO role, the, the domain controller that's going to maintain the role of the Schema Master has to be Windows Server 2003, Service Pack 1 or higher. Okay, so what we're going to do in this demonstration is simply raise the domain functional level to native. So we're just going to raise it. And it should be noted that once you raise the domain functional level, you cannot go back to the previous level. So you're going to be, you know, stuck, I guess, not for a better word, at that level or higher, you know, once you make the change, which if you're doing the proper planning, we shouldn't really be too concerned about that. That's what we want to do. We want to, we want to move up to the newer levels. We want to decommission the older domain controllers off of our network. So to confirm that the raise was successful, we can go back to raise domain functional level. And if you look real close, you can see where it says current domain functional level is native. This interface can be a little confusing because some people may look at the screen and say, well, this is my current level down here in this white window. Uh, when actually this is the level that you want to move to. It says select an available domain functional level. So this would be the level I want to move to. It's not the level that I'm currently at. So I just want to make that point. I could also still raise it, you know, one more level to 03 if I chose to. But we're not going to do that right now. So we'll just cancel out of that. Okay, so it's that easy to raise the domain functional level. All right. Now, for demonstration purposes, because I'm a little limited on resources here in this virtual machine environment, I just want to make sure that you understand uh, that I'm going to be installing Exchange on this virtual machine. And this virtual machine is a domain controller. Now in real life, 
we would recommend to make sure that you install Exchange on a member server of some kind. Okay, uh, you know you wouldn't typically be installing Exchange on your domain controller. Uh, also, uh, you may decide to install your different roles on different machines. You might install your mailbox role on a, on a specific set of hardware, so you can take advantage of the mailbox fault tolerance. You may install the client access server role on a different box, uh, so you can do some load balancing. You may decide to install the hub transport on another box. Again, you can do some load balancing there. So you might decide to take the different roles that we have now in Exchange Server 2007, cut them up a little bit. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to install it all in one. So. What I'm going to be doing next is installing IIS because I have to support uh, the client access server role on this box. Okay, So the point that I want to make very clear is that if I have a member server and I'm installing the client access server role, I need to make sure that I have IIS installed. Now you can actually start the installation, uh, but somewhere throughout the prerequisite checks that take place, if it sees that it's trying to install the client access server role, and it sees that that role is not installed, it's going to say, hey, look, you don't meet these requirements. You know, go back and install your client access server role. So I'm going to go into the Windows components, and I'm going to highlight application server. Now, a special little note here, don't check this little checkbox right here. What you want to do is just highlight this, and then go to Details, and make sure you pick IIS. Right? We can take the, uh, the COM access, COM plus access is fine, and go to details. Notice that nothing else is checked here. All we want to install is just IIS. Nothing, none, none of these other components or subcomponents do we want to install here at this point. Also down here, we can see that there are some other subcomponents for IIS that we can install. We do not want to install either NNTP or SMTP. Exchange Server 2007 comes with its own SMTP service uh, and also news groups uh, we want to try to you know move towards you know SharePoint services so we're probably not gonna you know want that on there so it's very well documented that if you're installing a client access server role and you're installing IIS you cannot install the NNTP nor the SMTP service you cannot install them that is actually a requirement of the Exchange server installation uh, for the machine that has IIS installed on it. Okay? And we'll just click OK on that. And we'll let this do the install. Okay, we can see that that installation has now completed, so we'll just finish that off. And it's that easy. We now have IIS installed. Alright, so that wasn't so bad, was it? Just install IIS and pick those simple options. Make sure you don't install the NNTP and SMTP services. Uh, the last thing we want to do is make sure that we have all the proper components. There's a few things that we need. We need to make sure that we have the Microsoft Management Console version 3.0. Just open up your MMC Snap-in, go to Help, and about the Microsoft Management Console. Verify that you have the 3.0 version. Uh, I have that installed because it comes with the service pack uh, that I have installed on this box. Uh, if you don't have a service pack machine, you can download the uh, MMC separately if you need to and then install it. Uh, also make sure you have the latest .NET support. The minimum requirement is for .NET 2.0 or greater and we can see that we have 3.5 Service Pack 1. And the last thing that I don't have installed here is the uh, PowerShell. So we have to go out here and install the PowerShell. Okay so I'm just gonna go out there and go to that Microsoft website and download the PowerShell. Here we go. And this is for Windows Server 2003. So I'm just going to click on download right there. And I'm going to save that to my downloads folder here. And we'll do that install. And once you have the PowerShell installed, you're in pretty good shape. So you have raised your domain functional level. You have installed IIS with all the proper options. You verified you have the MMC, MMC 3.0, the .NET Framework 2.0 or higher, and PowerShell 1.0. Okay, great. The uh, PowerShell has finished the installation. And we can see that we have the PowerShell here. And we'll just pin that to our start menu. All right, that completes part three. 
uh, stay tuned for part four and we'll be very close to finishing off this uh, pre-installation section.